Resident Evil. Originally released by Capcom in 1996, the video game series would go on to become a global cultural phenomenon that would define the survival horror genre. It's not hard to see why so many people throughout the years have grown to love these games. From gripping gameplay, to iconic creatures, stunning scenery, catchy one-line zingers... Where's everyone going? Bingo? And most recently, simping for hot vampire ladies. There's something in this series for almost anyone. My childhood fascination with the series began with the first game. After playing through Resident Evil 1 in all of its clunky, tank-controlled glory, I was absolutely hooked. I even forced my parents to buy me this amazing tyrant toy with a heart that can be pumped. Unfortunately, my dog destroyed it years ago, but ever since then, I've played through every mainline and spin-off title, from Resident Evil 1 through 8 to Resident Evil Survivor and Gaiden. But as long as I've been playing video games, I've also been a longtime fan of the Marvel comics. Imagine my excitement then when, years later, I discovered that Resident Evil was going to have a character in the next Marvel vs. Capcom game, Jill in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. However, it would be a very long wait before fans would see any more fighting game representation from Resident Evil, due to Capcom putting the Marvel vs. series on hiatus. In the 11 year span between the release of MVC2 and MVC3, the video game developer had really ramped up its rapidly flourishing Resident Evil series, releasing a number of mainline series games. By the time Capcom had begun development of MVC3 in 2008, Resident Evil had grown to become a core franchise, debatably even bigger than Capcom's longtime staple series, Street Fighter. At this point, it was practically inevitable that Resident Evil would have a much higher representation in the developer's upcoming, highly demanded fighting game, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. There's a uh, heavily armed woodland creature. Zombies, mutants, tyrants, but nothing's prepared you for a running brawl. Playable characters in MVC3 from Resident Evil include Jill. Chris, and Wesker, along with one of the series' most famous B.O.W.s, or bio-organic weapons, Nemesis. I really wish that they'd included my favorite girl, Ada Wong, in the roster, but seeing as she wasn't really a major playable character until Resident Evil 6, it makes sense that she wasn't included, since at the time of MVC3's debut in 2011, Resident Evil 5 was the main game and subsequently the main focus for most of the series' representation. But even though Resident Evil 5 is the main game present within MVC3, there are also a number of small nods to other games that were also included. In the Resident Evil series, Tricell is a pharmaceutical company working secretly with Albert Wesker and Umbrella Corp to develop different viruses and is the antagonistic force in Resident Evil 5 and many other Resident Evil games. Looks like I found a new guinea pig. Interesting. So what's this I hear about a place called Raccoon City? The stage Tricell Laboratory is both in the original release of MVC3 and MVC3 Ultimate version, and is presumably one of Tricell's secret labs, hidden in an undisclosed location. Though I would have loved to see the main hall from the mansion or the main hall from RPD, but since almost every Resident Evil game features some section in which the protagonists have to navigate their way through a lab, I think having this kind of stage in MVC3 is really representative of the series as a whole. One of the most noticeable features of Tricell Laboratory is the enclosure of liquors lined along both sides. Presumably, these are Resident Evil 5 liquors, since they appear significantly more muscular than their first appearance in Resident Evil 2. Way off in the background, right around here, there also may be hunters, which are buff, human-like reptiles that appear in Resident Evil 1 and 3. But the most prominent B.O.W. in the stage is Tyrant, the last boss of Resident Evil 1. Located in the dead center, Tyrant interestingly does not make an appearance in Resident Evil 5, though he does make a cameo in MBC2 in one of Jill's supers, making this his second official appearance in the series. 
This furthers my theory that rather than solely being based off of Resident Evil 5, Tricell Laboratory is more of an homage to many different games in the series. As your characters move vertically through the air, we can also see seemingly hundreds of pods lining the sides, containing people kept by Wesker for experimentation. And as you jump even further, you can see a large platform with an elevator. In Resident Evil 5, this platform is where you fight different enemies and a giant spider boss that stops the elevator. In MVC3, the elevator is combined with another location in Resident Evil 5, the conveyor belt area, which is in Chapter 5-2 of the game. In the stage itself, we can see that the conveyor belts have explosives sitting on top, shuffling them to different furnaces along the sides. Also in the middle section, we can see there are different tubes containing flowers that, in Resident Evil 5, are revealed to have helped produce the T-Virus, along with blue tubes that I can only assume to be Ouroboros, which is a plot device in Resident Evil 5. As the battle between characters progresses, a long aerial or ground combo attack that strikes a character against the ground can eventually cause the glass enclosures to break. The whole area will then go into an emergency mode, with red flashing lights, debris falling from the ceiling, and liquors roaming freely on the stage. Despite the failing state of the lab, however, the conveyor belt is still chugging along. <laughs> this is similar to when labs in the Resident Evil series inevitably initiate a self-destruct sequence, representing the tropes of the series perfectly. A fun fact is that you can actually kill the liquors when you perform supers and get items such as ammo, money, and grenades which is similar to what you'd actually get in-game, though these don't actually do anything. In addition, the liquor's movement is actually at a much lower frame rate than your characters so as to not distract from the fight, and after they're killed, the liquors will replenish over time. The music for the stage is also called Tricell Laboratory. It's the typical dramatic movie soundtrack complete with electric guitar, violin, and choir. In order to hear the song while playing, you'll need to turn on the dynamic sound option on in the menu. The background music doesn't seem to be from a specific Resident Evil game as far as I could tell, but if you happen to know, please mention it in the comments. And interestingly, the music changes dynamically depending on the number of characters left, with the song becoming increasingly dramatic with added percussion each time a character is defeated. This song is also present in the next stage that we'll discuss, Chaos at Tricell. As Tricell Laboratory self-destructs, a new stage is formed as a result of the aftermath, Chaos at Tricell, which was added in MVC3 Ultimate. In my opinion, this is one of the better stage reskins in the game. Bent metal, broken glass, and enemy drops are scattered randomly about. The color scheme is different, the conveyor belt is broken, and the BOWs are nowhere to be found. You can also hear electricity faintly sparking from the broken wires and servers, which is more obvious when the music is turned off. Moreover, in the center of the stage, we can see vials of different viruses like TNG left on the stage, perhaps to be destroyed along with the lab. Whenever I think of this stage, for some reason, I imagine the whole stage being engulfed in flames. However, upon examination, I can see that there are actually only really three small fires burning. And I think part of the reason why I think this is because the whole stage has this orange lighting that seems very ominous. Overall, I just really love the energy of the stage since it feels like a very high stakes situation. Like if your team loses, you get left behind in the explosion or something along those lines. Friend of yours? Stars. Nemesis. The other game where we see Resident Evil crossing into fighting game territory is MVC Infinite. My overall opinion of this game is that while I like the gameplay and some of the characters, the mashup stages tend to be a little disappointing and can come off as somewhat generic with some notable exceptions. The ideas behind the stages sound great on paper, but in my opinion weren't implemented well. 
An example where this is done better is in PlayStation All-Stars, where they combine two worlds together, but in a much more creative and polished manner, like one game invading the other. In addition, the development team seem to have a different, more cinematic direction in Infinite as opposed to the stylized, busy, arcade-like 2D artwork from MVC3. The four Resident Evil-related stages in MVC Infinite are Umbrella Control Room and Laboratory Pathway, Research Facility, and Outside Umbrella Tower. The name Umbrella is a mashup between Modoc's crime organization AIM, or Advanced Idea Mechanics, and Resident Evil's Umbrella Corp. The Umbrella Control Room stage is located in an underground lab and is used by Modoc to develop biological weapons. In the background of the control room stage, we can see obscured Umbrella logos in the shadows to the left and the right side of the stage. There are also some BOWs and test tubes on the sides of the stage, alongside monitors presumably displaying vital signs for those BOWs, and pipes with liquid coming out of the pit helping to sustain them. This area is a large, futuristic looking lab where a humongous version of Modoc is in the center of the stage at a size much larger than his playable appearance in the last game, surveying over the battle. And like in the comics, his size appears to be inconsistent. In the center of the room, we can also see a large portal with robot arms scattered around the perimeter. This hole houses a green swirling portal that leads directly into the Dark Kingdom, which, in the story, Jedi uses to go back and forth between the Dark World and Umbrella. In the story mode version of this stage, Modok is using the Time Stone to fight the player, acting as a stage hazard, while the player fights Nemesis for the first and only time. For the music, there are no specific stage themes in this game, unless you're counting story mode, but I feel like that's more so for the story than for this stage specifically, since it's a mix of different character themes. The second stage is the Umbrella Laboratory Pathway, and in my opinion, this stage is even more generic than the control room. Nothing really screams aim or umbrella. The defining features of this stage are the numerous chambers holding BOWs in stasis leading to a large umbrella logo in the center, but nothing really beyond that. Overall, while I really like the idea behind these stages, I think MVC could have just taken them to the next level if they put in just a few more small details. For example, I might have some of the AIM scientists wandering around in the background in their goofy, big-headed hazmat suits from the comics. As an added plus, the bright yellow color of the suits would visually contrast against the darker background. And to take it one step further, these scientists could also be experimenting with other Resident Evil BOWs. The two story-only Umbrella stages are the Research Facility and New Metro City, Symbio Attack. Unfortunately, there's not much to dissect here. The research facility is essentially a large warehouse with an overlooking pathway. It's pretty generic, and you wouldn't really be able to tell what it is unless you look for the logo in the background. I would have loved to see a more creative nod to Resident Evil in this stage, but I think it ends up looking just like any old lab. In New Metro City, Symbiote Attack, you encounter and must defeat a symbiote in New Metro City. However, weirdly enough, the New Metro stages that you can unlock from the actual game, such as Downtown at Crossroads, aren't in the story mode, which makes me wonder why the developers bothered making up an entirely new stage for just story mode when they could have easily used one of the other existing ones. The stage is essentially just a cityscape with a giant symbiote BOW wandering in the background, and nothing that really screams Metro City to me. I really wish that I had more excuses to talk about Resident Evil since I'm such a big fan of the series, and at some point I'd love to do a video detailing the different environments of the Resident Evil games and talk about something that has nothing to do with fighting games, so keep an eye out for that in the future. Anyways, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.